As the accounting, finance, and accounts payable landscape evolves, it's evident that technology, and more specifically, technology driven by AI, is fast becoming a real game changer. And it's happening faster than the speed of light. We've got some brand new metrics that provide insights into how career-savvy individuals are taking advantage of AI to jumpstart the climb up the corporate ladder. And we're going to show you how you can do the same. Make sure you stick around until the end when we discuss A. AI power users, something you're going to hear quite a lot about in the coming months. So with that, let's dive right in. Now, the first thing that I want to address is that it's not too late. The train has not left the station. We've got some statistics which I'm going to share as we go through our talk today. In a survey conducted by Microsoft and LinkedIn in a report called the 2024 Work Trend Index Annual Report, um, they found that three of, uh, out of four people are already using AI at work, at least to some degree. Of those who are using it, of those three out of four individuals who are using it, 46%, almost half of them, started using it in the last six months. So what this tells me is, as I said, the train has not left the station. It's not too late. You can get on that train, and we're going to discuss how. You can be on, on the forefront, if you will, of people who know how to use this stuff. So uh, before I, I dive in, I just want to say a big thanks to Microsoft and LinkedIn, since much of the metrics that we're going to discuss today comes from their new report, the 2024 Work Trend Index Annual Report. Okay, so almost half the people who are using AI at work today only started doing it in the last six months. Now, there are a lot of benefits that come with using it. And here are some statistics. I'm just going to read them off, uh, but you'll get the idea. 90% of those who are using it says it helps save them time. 85% says it lets them focus on their more and more important work. 84% says they um, are able to be more creative because of it. And 83% say they enjoy their work more. And to me, that, that's a biggie. I, you don't want to underestimate the value of that. Now, there is a new concept that you're going to hear people start talking about um, and it comes from this this report and it's called BYOAI bring your own artificial intelligence to work if you will and so people it's not a company saying hey go out and use it but people have started doing it on their own and you may have done the same thing if you're using for example chat GPT have you started using that have you started using Microsoft Copilot um, so if you're using one of these you are already on, on the train now sometimes people will say uh, anytime there's anything that has to do with technology, that I'll say, oh, that's, that's for the young folks, or that, that's not for me. Um, you know, I didn't learn about that in school. Well, most of us didn't learn about it in school, no matter how young or how old uh, they are. And a very interesting phenomena came out of this report, and that is that it's not just Gen Z who's using artificial intelligence at work. As you can see from this, this chart here, basically um, it, it's across the board. It's not one group using it more than the other. Um, so, you know, that was good to see. At least it was, it was heartening for me to see. Now, these statistics that I'm sharing, as I said, came from this report put out by Microsoft and LinkedIn, and it's 38 pages long. Um, you can read it if you want. Just do a quick search, Microsoft LinkedIn uh, report 2024, and, and you'll come up with it. But I went through the whole thing and pulled out what I consider to be the relevant statistics, so hopefully you won't have to do the same. Okay, I want to look at this. I want to share with you how employers are looking looking at this because I think it's really important um, that you understand this, um, especially if you're going to be looking for a job or you're concerned about your job at, at all. So I, I call these, these statistics why you need to care about AI and learning about AI, which by the way is not difficult at all. So the statistics from the survey showed that 66% said they would not hire someone who did not have AI skills. That's two thirds. And 71% um, they'd rather hire a candidate with less experience but more AI experience than somebody who didn't know anything about it okay and with AI over three quarters of them say it will give early in career talent uh, you'll get greater responsibilities so if you figure out how to use it you know how to use it you'll have greater responsibilities now at the same time all this stuff with AI is going on employers are also concerned about finding the talent to fill roles and over half 55 percent said they are very 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 concerned about that. Um, so it's not just they just don't want a warm body. They want a warm body who has 
has certain skill sets. Now, this chart here uh, shows uh, where this, this perceived talent shortage is. And since I talk mostly to finance and accounting people and accounts payable people, I've kind of put the red arrow. I'm showing you where finance and accounting falls on this chart, just in case um, you're one of my regulars and you are uh, wonder where it is. So yes, there is some concern that there won't be adequate uh, uh, talent out there. And if you've been, you know, reading any of the literature, you, you will have seen that um, there is some concern that um, not enough people are going into accounting. Okay, so it's kind of we're at a conundrum, if you will. Um, employers are worried about finding talent with the right skills, and employees are worried about losing their jobs. So hopefully the two the two can meet, if you will. This is one of those those times when you know you want you want the two to meet, not never the twain shall meet. Now one of the things that came out of this this report is that they identified four different levels of AI users, okay? And it, it starts at the bottom um, with the people who are not using it or who are looking at their little skeptical, and they call that group the skeptics. Basically, they're people who have not learned anything about it. And then moving up the, the, the spectrum, if you will, are the novice, people who, you know, know a little bit about it, but don't really, uh, ha haven't really started using it. And I, I hope everybody le listening to this will be in one of the last two groups, or at least after you listen to this, you'll be in one of the last two groups. And these are what we call that they call the explorers, uh, people who are trying, who are beginning to use it, beginning to experiment. And then we have, and I expect we're going to hear a lot about this, what they call AI power users. Now, before you think that that's some big fancy highfalutin thing that you'll never, you'll never be able to attain, let me just say, stay with me for another few minutes because um, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. So when I saw this AI power user, um, I'm like, what? You know, what do they talk? What do they mean? Now, I want to make it clear when I go through these little um, uh, items, if you will, that what we're not talking about is somebody who's gone out and purchased an automation solution that uses AI. That's great if, if, if you, your company has done that, but that does not make you an AI power user. user. To be considered one of these people, you must be familiar um, to extremely familiar with AI and have a general understanding of what generative AI is. You also should be using it at work several times a week week and uh, people who are considered power users say that AI saves them at least 30 minutes a day. So they're able to eliminate 30 minutes a day of, of tasks that they can then spend that time, they can devote it on more value add stuff. And there are, are uh, benefits. So the power users, when they were interviewed, you can see all these, are, these percentages are in the 90s. So most of them said that their workload became more manageable. They were able to be more uh, creative. Of. They were able to focus on what they considered to be their more important work. They were more motivated and they enjoyed work more. And you know, you know, having these positive outcomes um, is an important thing and it, it would be good for your staff. It, it will help um, raise morale. So there are some, some serious benefits of, you know, getting on the, on the bandwagon early, if you will. So how do you become an AI power user? So it's not difficult. This is what the report said. It said you have to develop some new habits because this is a little different than what we normally do. Um, you want to experiment with different ways to use AI. And they also um, describe this as the most important feature of being considered an AI power user. And let's face it, this is not something that anybody coming out of school is going to have those skills. So we, you know, it's kind of a level playing field and we're all at, at the starting gate and we can all do it. So experiment a little bit and then power users, AI power users, redesign existing work processes to take advantage of AI. So that's really all you have to do, just a little time and effort and you can get there. Now, what do these power users use AI for? Um, they use it to catch up on mis missed meanings. And I know probably some of you are aware there is software out there that will actually attend a meeting with you, if you will, and take notes, especially if it's online. They use it to analyze information. Um, if you were in the creative, they would be designing visual content for your layout, layout people. Um, it, they're using it to inter
interact with customers. I'm sure you've all had experiences, plus and positive and negative, but we won't go there, um, with uh, chatbots. Uh, so they're using it to interact with customers for brainstorming, problem solving, and to redesign existing processes that maybe aren't as efficient and effective as they could be. So lots that can be done with it. Now, um, this comes right out of the report, out of the Microsoft report, and it's real life examples. And so I'm going to talk to this slide for a few seconds, but you should feel free to stop your computer and read it and think about it. Um, so I want to just talk to a few of them. It says, when I don't get the response I want from the first prompt, I try again. And I can tell you from personal experience that, you know, you have to be quite precise when you put your commands in because it will give you exactly what you asked for. So for example, I was trying to get Microsoft Copilot to draw some pictures for me that I'm, I was going to use in another one of our AP technology talks later on this week. And I and I typed in, give me a picture of, I think I wanted a clock, give me a picture of a clock. And it proceeded to tell me where I could get pictures of a clock. And I was like, oh no, that's not what I want. I wanted it to draw me a picture of a clock. So I put in, draw me a picture of a clock. And then I got what I was going, what I, what I wanted. So you have to, you know, a little exploring. Remember, you want to get yourself, you want to be an, an AI explorer. Um, so, some people use it to get ready for the work day. Um, some people research and try new prompts, and then they share those prompts with their, their colleagues. They discuss it, what worked for you, what didn't work for me. Um, they experiment with different ways, and they also try and integrate it, if you will, and make it a priority to use AI effectively instead of automatically sitting down and doing something um, that's, especially if it's tedious, you know, stop and think a minute, oh, how could I, how, how could I better use this? How how could I better do this? Um, and then talk to your, your your coworkers, see what they're doing, see what you can learn from them. So this was part of um, a, a week's worth of programming that we have, uh, we're producing this, um, this week around uh, the issues of technology and accounting finance and accounts payable and how they impact your, their impact on you and your career. And most importantly, how you can ride the tidal wave of AI to career success. You can watch them all along with the session on how to use Microsoft Copilot, which is a great way to get started if you haven't already started. You can you look, watch them right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen and is in the description. Good luck.